Let's start in Photoshop with the old-fashioned way to open files. From your file menu, choose Open. And I'm going to go to my desktop because I've copied my project files there. I'll double-click to get inside Project Files and double-click to get into Chapter 1, Introducing Photoshop. Now, inside this folder, there are four file formats. JPEG, which stands for Joint Photographics Experts Group. PSD, which stands for Photoshop Document, the native format of Photoshop. PSD files can contain layers, whether it be adjustment layers, type layers, layers of different images. It is the native Photoshop format. And I actually use that for placing into Adobe Illustrator or into InDesign or even into Dreamweaver, Adobe's web authoring application, because it will dynamically build, through smart objects, the web format that I tell it it needs. JPEG is primarily a web format, but it's ideal for photographs. However, be warned, it is a lossy format. JPEG will permanently trash data in order to get a smaller file size. And what that means is, you could fit a lot more images on your camera card or on your smartphone by using JPEG. So the first time you save, you may lose 300 pixels, just as a random number. If you open it and save as JPEG again, Photoshop may look at the image and say, eh, you won't notice if I trash 500 pixels. So now we've lost 800. So it gets progressively worse. It's like a copy of a copy of a copy. So be careful, if I receive a JPEG in from someone else, I immediately save as a Photoshop file so that it's uncompressed and I don't lose more data. The third format in this folder is .ai, Adobe Illustrator. It's a vector or something that was created from scratch in Illustrator, in this case, something that was traced in Illustrator. And the last format is PNG, a newer web format. It stands for portable network graphic. And what it really means is it can do all the rich colors of JPEG and some of the extra features we only used to get in GIF, the graphics interchange format. Things like transparency, the ability to wipe out a background, or animation. I love one of these shows that says we're doing the GIF of the night where they have different shots that are just played in sequence so there's slight animation to it. But I'm going to open the PSD. So with a double click, I've opened the old fashioned way. Now, my favorite way is to open through File, Browse and Bridge, which launches the free program that comes with Photoshop called Adobe Bridge. And I use it for all things Creative Suite. However, there is a handy little mini bridge right at the bottom. And in mini bridge, I can see all of the images in a given folder and just double click to open it up. So MiniBridge is a faster way, if you're not exactly sure which one of the images you're going to work on right now, to get a good picture of what's in the folder, instead of opening every one and going, mm, this isn't the image I want. Let's do something destructive to this image. Well, this is a St. Patrick's Day shot, and I'm not joking when I say it was taken by a four-year-old. My son did take this, and I actually kind of like it, but something destructive would be to take this Photoshop file and do a save as JPEG. The reason it's destructive is because it will trash pixels. The reason I need to do it is I need to email this to someone. And the Photoshop file, uncompressed, is 15 megabytes. A lot of corporate email systems don't allow attachments more than one or two megabytes. So I need to get this as small as possible in order to email it and somebody doesn't need me eating up their inbox storage with a 15 meg file. So you should be saving down. But I always preserve my PSD as the original high resolution uncompressed version. So when I choose JPEG and hit save, Photoshop has a way to compress more data, crashing a lot of pixels. Quality of maximum is trashing fewer pixels. So a five meg file is still too big. I'll come down, mm. seven is under a meg. So I usually shoot between six and eight when I'm doing a JPEG with my goal being to get under one megabyte. 
That way it still looks great for the person receiving it, but it's not too big. So with a quality of eight, I'm going to hit OK. And I will minimize Photoshop. And if I open that Project Files folder and open my Chapter 1 folder, there we have the original image. Now 15.7 was Photoshop's estimate of the file size. Depending on your version of the operating system and Mac or Windows, that number will vary by 1 meg up or down. But my JPEG, I did hit under that magic number of 1 meg, so 986K. If I come back down to Photoshop, I could try another web format, File, Save As, and choose Ping, Portable Network Graphic. And when I hit Save, ah, I noticed something in the last screen that added a little bit extra to the file size, and I'll show you next. But I'm just going to click OK on the defaults, minimize Photoshop, and the file size is 9 megs. I really didn't save a lot. So if I come back to Photoshop for the last time and do a Save As again, what added to the file size was this embed color profile that attempts to keep the color looking better on Facebook or on web browsers or when you print. But if I turn it off and I save as JPEG again, I'll add a little bit to the file name. No, ICC. It's technically called an ICC profile, the International Color Consortium. I'll hit save. I'll leave it on the same quality, and now I'm reading a number of 978. Let's see the difference. I'll minimize. Hmm. 986, 987. Virtually nothing. It didn't save a lot. But that color profile, depending on the format, can add a few K. So if you don't need hard control over the color or want to control the appearance as much, you can uncheck Include Profile. I, as a color professional, always include the color profile because I want to know that I have more control over how the color looks when it lands on the web or when it's printed. And Facebook does read the color profiles, so you'll see a difference depending on what your color settings are. So this has been an overview of using File Open to open files, my favorite mini bridge to open files, and choosing several of the most popular file formats to get your file size down or prevent compression and keep an original uncompressed or PSD version of your photo.